Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Jose Aranda, along with my colleagues, Therese DeSimio and Susan Bontley. We all work for the Doniana Community College Library and bring you today's presentation on how to write good notes and outlines. Before we get started, though, a couple of things we'd like to uh, cover. Um, you do not need to have your video on. Um, it's not necessary if you want, that's fine. Um, if you'd mute your microphone too, that would help. If you have any comments or questions during the presentation, please, please use the chat box and someone will uh, be in touch with you. Uh, I will also pause <clears throat> a couple times during the presentation, entertain any questions you may have or at the end of the presentation. Um, this is being recorded. So you can retrieve the recording when that becomes available uh, at a later date and share it with others you may know who may be interested as well. Um, we have on our homepage a link to <clears throat> research guides and one of them uh, houses all of the online presentations. We have been doing these presentations uh, for the last two semesters, so fall 2020 and last summer. And we're currently obviously working on this semester. So they'll all be neatly organized for you to retrieve. Um, and again, we can provide you that those links um, at the end. So if you missed last week's presentation, it was on studying 101, kind of talking about the basics of how to how to improve study studying and uh, the skills associated with that. So you may want, if you're interested, you may want to view that. Uh, in addition to these research guides that we post from our library homepage, we also have a YouTube channel. So all of these presentations that are recorded get converted and uploaded to YouTube. So you can watch them there as well. Right, so let us begin. <clears throat> with today's presentation on how to write good notes and outlines. Um, my name is Jose Aranda. As I've said, there's my contact information, email and phone number um, for your information. Up at the top right of this slide are the phone numbers and email address and website for the library at Doniana Community College, uh, where uh, you will find many links and resources and, and services available to you as well. Um, towards the end, I will briefly talk about a couple of resources, library resources that we subscribe to that we feel um, supplement this presentation and uh, are useful for you. And I'll talk about that when I get to that slide as well. So let us begin. So here's a list of the seven things um, that we feel are important for you to know in improving note-taking and outline. First, I'll talk about note-taking. <clears throat> um, there are many, there are several and many systems out there. Um, that will teach you their system, their way of taking notes. And, and they're all great, right? Anything that helps you become a better note taker and that leads you to a better understanding of the material, especially while you're in college, is good and worth exploring. Uh, this presentation is not going to talk about any of those specific styles. This is more in general, more in general on how to, as a student, improve your note taking. And uh, so we hope that the uh, advice and tips that we provide for you in this presentation uh, will help you just do that. But just know that there, there's a lot more uh, out there that, and books and, and websites and, and you, know, you can really take this further and maybe some um, subjects uh, favor ones than others. So just keep that in mind. So here are the seven <clears throat> that I'll talk to you about individually, but in overview, you know, read your assignments before coming to class, 
get organized, give yourself room, think while you write, ask questions, develop a system, and review. Those are the seven important things you should know on how to improve note-taking. So the first one is reading, reading before you come to class. Um, you want to do that to prepare yourself. Um, and as far as note taking is concerned, if you have a better understanding of what the day's lecture is going to be about, um, you'll be that much more prepared to take notes and, and engaged in the lecture. Um, I know some students <clears throat> struggle with focusing on writing notes. And sometimes it can be a challenge listening to the instructor, the lecture, the video, whatever is being presented. Um, and so if you find yourself in that situation, reach out to us. Maybe we can, I'm sure we can uh, pair you up with, with another resource that could help you improve that. But um, the thing is, is you want to read as much as you can. Most professors in their syllabus tell you each week what you're supposed to be reading. And it's really important to do it before class. Uh, that way you're prepared. And uh, as you uh, listen to the uh, lecture and the professor, uh, you will have some knowledge, right? As you listen and write notes, and that is all part of the engagement that is necessary for you to understand the content. <clears throat> so reading is very important. Read as much as you can. Um, before class uh, so that we, we can enjoy the day's presentation and lecture. Second one is getting organized. So whatever system works for you, use it, but please, uh, please know that getting organized is essential, okay? Especially if you're in a class that is content heavy, or <clears throat> meaning there's a lot of information, a lot of facts, a lot of details, or you're in a, a, a subject area that, that that's just, you know, you're reading, I don't know, 50, 100 pages a week. Um, the better you are, uh, the better organized you are, uh, the better you'll be because you'll be able to compartmentalize the different aspects of, of the class that's required, but also to help you understand the material so when you're getting ready for the exam or any kind of assignment uh, and, in, and you're organized, you'll be able to access information quicker because of that. Uh, us, we work in libraries. Um, libraries are organized. We have, we have um, a system, probably more than one, that organizes our books and as well as our electronic resources. So uh, we're, we're uh, champions and supporters of being organized. Uh, here are some tips on how to do that. You want to you date and, and title your notes for each class. Um, that is one way to keep organized. Um, sometimes a, an instructor will reference a previous lecture or the syllabus will. Uh, it, and if you're organized and if you date your, your notes, you're, you know, you'll be able to refer to to, the, to that day's lectures and their notes by doing so, okay? You find yourself writing many notes, uh, many pages of notes, excuse me, number, uh, number and date your pages. Um, and uh, try to begin each lecture on a new page. Uh, I know some of us like to conserve, but if you're new at this or if you find this a bit challenging, starting a new page can be helpful. Um, find a folder or some kind of uh, organizer where you can keep your notes, right? Um, the last thing you want to do is, is accidentally <clears throat> drop your, your backpack or your folder and, and they all go flying out. So try to find whatever system works for you to keep them organized and safe um, and, and accessible uh, because you also want to have other sections of this organization that houses uh, other materials for the class. And so if you separate them, such as, let's say, reading, right, uh, your reading uh, notes, um, they could be um, valuable assets in your studying if you've got them organized. 
things. And the last part, after each class, you want to review your notes. And when you do so, try to add topics or headings to them so that um, in your mind, you're able to, um, again, further file the material that you just covered. And by providing topics or headings, it'll make finding information that you need later that much quicker. So be organized. And again, we, if you, if this is an area that uh, you need a, a little uh, encouragement on or more information in, let us know and we can find some resources to help you get better organized. Number three, give yourself room. I suffer from this um, personally. Um, I have not the best handwriting. And sometimes I don't start on a fresh sheet of paper. Uh, I, I like to conserve. And so anyways, that's, that's, that's me. But I have uh, many times I'll, I'll start taking notes. And then I run out of room. And then whatever I'm listening to or whoever I'm listening to or whatever movie or whatever it is, uh, references an earlier point that I had already written down and I go back and I want to add something and there's no room. And so I'm finding myself writing in the margins and, and drawing all kinds of things. Temporarily, that may be okay, but the long term, especially uh, if you're new to college, uh, if you have other challenges, if you really want to uh, give yourself the best chance there is we suggest giving yourself room. And what that means is that as you write your notes, try to give some space in between your note taking. So give, give yourself two to three lines after each main topic that you talk, or maybe, um, I don't know, you can, you can gauge the clock, whatever system you may develop that may be useful for you. The point is by, by leaving space, on your notes, on your pages, you're able to go back and fill in stuff as a class progresses or later on as you review. You don't want to be caught uh, in the middle of something really important that you knew that you know you should be writing down, and and be, and uh, there's no room to do that. So give yourself some space. Uh, another uh, piece of advice is to only write on one side of the paper. Uh, use loose leaf notebooks, uh, the sheets, uh, that way you can interchange them and, and, and put them in different uh, sections of a notebook, for example, a three, three ring binder uh, for, for, for better organization, right, uh, and review. Or you can insert them in other folders that you may have that may be relevant with other materials there, uh, as we have listed there, class handouts or study guides or other notes from your study partners. So keep that in mind. Um, if you have bad handwriting, we suggest you type your notes right away as soon as you can. Uh, when you wanna, re later on when I'm done talking about the seven points, you wanna review your notes, right? To prepare you for the exam or for whatever uh, assignment may be due. And so if you can't read your notes, that's another problem that I suffer from, or I, at least I used to suffer from that before. I think I've improved it. But uh, the last thing you wanna do is come to a sentence or a part, right? And you can't read it. And you know it was important because you wrote it down. So if that's a situation you find yourself in, we suggest you type them up and um, that should avoid any problems like that. So give yourselves room is number three. Number four, think while you write. This is really important. And we covered some of this at last week's presentation with studying, right? Uh, how you should be thinking uh, before, during, and after you read, for example. And so in this point here, uh, we challenge you to not write every single word your instructor is telling you. Uh, most of us can't write that fast anyways, but I know some people record lectures. Um, we don't think that's useful for you to write down every single word. Instead, listen for the key points, the major points, the big principles, the concepts. Write those down, or at least start with those, and then you can fill in if you feel it's necessary later on. 
because what's what, what's important when you write these main points down is you want to make connections, okay? How does this information that you're listening to fit into what you read that was due before class or what the instructor covered last week or some, some other place? There may be a handout or an assignment that's due that has also further information for you to consider. So you the point here is you want to make connections with what you listen to and gain because that's where that's when you really engage in the material. And when you do so successfully, that's when you'll learn the most. So concentrate on the points directly related to or illustrated in what you already have read and or know. Listen to verbal cues from the instructor that indicate something's important. Um, sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes instructors will tell you this is important or write this down, or you should, right, do something like that. But if you're not sure, ask. Um, if you don't want to ask and interrupt the instructor during the lecture, make sure you uh, ask him or her right afterwards, or when you get home, send him or her an email, follow up, okay? Make a little note for yourself, you know, put whatever concept, uh, you're not sure of. And, and what I do is I put a little question mark in a circle. So that'll remind me to, okay, I need to make sure and, and think about this again. And if I feel it necessary, um, then I'll ask the, the instructor or whatever source I'm getting that information. Uh, but the point of this is for you to think so that what you write on your notes makes sense to you and they help you connect all the points uh, that were presented to you during that lecture to help you understand and build and engage. That's the purpose of this. Uh, so think, write before, during, and after. Thinking and writing go together. Studies have shown that if you write things down, your subconscious mind has a better chance of remembering it. So that's why we do a lot of that stuff in college. I've already said this. But it's really important. Ask questions. And if you are shy, if you're a shy person, we need to work on that. <clears throat> so you need to find a way and we can help you. Uh, you know, there may be other ways that you can ask your question. Like I mentioned, email is a good one. But uh, maybe your instructor will prefer a different, you know, different way, a different method. Most instructors have office hours. Please use them. It's a perfect time, especially before the class, to ask. So if you attended a lecture today, today is um, Thursday, okay? So let's say you attended a lecture today, Thursday. You took notes. You're not going to see the instructor in class uh, until Tuesday. You want to make sure if you have a concern or a question regarding the material that you ask it before the next class. It's real important. Uh, do yourselves a favor. and and and. Work on if you were shy, uh, asking and and uh, but if you're not shy, by all means, uh, ask away. Uh, instructors enjoy students that ask questions because it shows that they're listening and engaged. And not only that, there may be others in the class that that have the same question as you did, and they're very glad you asked it. So asking questions helps address any kind of gaps you may have in understanding. Remember I mentioned earlier, um, connecting the points. So there may be a gap. There may be one that you had uh, that you weren't clear on. So asking questions help cover those gaps. Um, and also they help make these connections, right? That I've been talking about of things you already know. And it's all about building, building this, this uh, knowledge in your mind uh, that that then leads you to being well prepared, relaxed, and ready for whatever exam or assignments are coming your way for assessment. Um, one thing about when you're reviewing your notes is if you do write down questions, you know, even if they're just questions for yourselves, let's say not necessarily a question you had for the instructor or you didn't share it with the instructor, but a question you had for yourself that you know, when I wrote that down, I'm going to go refer to chapter five in the reading because I thought I saw something or I read something that talked about X, Y, Z. And I want to make sure that that's the same 
XYZ that professor was talking about, okay? So that is a good piece of advice that you too can write these questions in your notes that are just meant for you as well. And the last part of this point is to always look up the information if you did have a question or on anything you did not understand or know, okay? If there is a vocabulary word, vocabulary word <clears throat> that came up in the lecture or in the reading and you weren't sure of, uh, please look it up. Do yourself a favor. Or it could be anything else, right? Something, anything that you do not know or are not clear, please make sure you look up that information because it could be key in helping you understand uh, the bigger picture. So ask, ask, ask. And we in the libraries love being asked for help. So if you ever want um, some assistance, please contact us. Number six, develop a system, okay? I talked about that there's many out there, okay? Uh, we're not pushing for any one, but in the seven steps that I'm talking about to you, uh, after some time that you feel comfortable, you hopefully are creating a system that works for you. So not only do the notes, not only are your notes readable to you, but they make sense to you. So in essence, that's how you create the system. Uh, in the presentation last week, I talked about using symbols. Um, so there's a couple examples here on this slide that show pictures of what, what, what that may look like or a concept map. I think the third one, the third and the fourth one are concept maps, okay? Whatever works for you. Again, these notes are for you. So outlining, numbering paragraphs, mind maps, a chart, a graph, anything that works for you, please use it. As long as it makes sense to you, it's worth doing. Develop a system. Number six. And number seven, review. Okay. Um, if you wait the day or the night before the test, you're cramming in. Uh, so we suggest you plan ahead and give yourself as much, much time. Ideally, and I know I mentioned this last week, you want to study way ahead of time and break it into chunks so that you can pace yourself. And by the time you get to the night or the day before the exam, for example, you are relaxed. You've covered it. You've reviewed it. You feel confident. So you can relax and do something enjoyable. Take a walk, go for a bike ride, watch a movie, because you're relaxed. You've done the work. So that's real important. But nonetheless, review. Uh, summarize. And here are some suggestions of how you can do that, right? You can summarize the day's lectures in your own words. And this is real important, especially if you know that your instructor is going to use assessments that require some form of synthesis or summary. If you know it's going to be on the exam, practice doing that. Um, this helps process the information that's there. It makes you think it through. It ensures you understand it. Uh, it ensures you understand it. It helps you remember it. It does many, many things. It allows you to add things. Uh, you want to make sure you don't forget. And it, it lets you organize the material that's all connected. So that was number seven. Always review, gives your, give yourself time. Here are some st simple steps on how to create an outline. Now an outline <clears throat> could be a form of note taking um, or it could be a form of studying or both. So, um, Everyone's different. Some people may prefer to take notes in an outline format always, and then they can use that outline to then write uh, complete sentences later on or vice versa. I tend to do the vice versa as well. Um, it helps me to go from the text of my writing into something like this in an outline to something even lesser than that, that is more like concentrated or, or, listing a list of essentials. It's progression for me. But for the point of learning how to improve outline, what you want to do is you want to start with the broad and then work your way down to the narrow, okay? Broad to narrow. So uh, we talked about 
uh, labeling your notes each day with the date and maybe the title or the topic. Same thing with an outline. You want to title the main topic. I'm, I'm sorry, you want to use as the title the main topic of, of that lecture, for example, or that chapter or that unit, okay? And then you break down the major points. In this case, you could use the Roman numerals. Not necessarily. You can, if you don't want to do that, you can use whatever system works for you. You can use the alphabet, uh, numbers, okay? Those are some examples. Um, but most outlines use a combination of all three. So you want to start from the broad, go to the narrow, list the major points. Those are your Roman numerals. And then you've got your subtopics, your capital letters, for example. Those are your subtopics. And then everything else is going to be supportive information. Okay, supportive information. So you can actually use an outline to study if you don't obviously have the time to do it during class. But based on your notes, you can then create that outline later. Compare your notes, compare your readings, compare it with others. It can be a useful tool. Uh, and there are uh, some software that provide it for us. You know, Microsoft Word does it. If you did not know, PowerPoint, and there may be others out there. So a lot of the technology offers this ability to be more organized and structured in this sense on creating an outline. If you, um, if you know you're gonna be encountering more than one topic, we suggest start, start on a new page, okay? Just like the note taking, you don't wanna be sloppy and then not be able to read it later and understand it. So hopefully this slide, uh, gave you some ideas on how to improve your outline, outlining skills. And here's an example, right? <clears throat> um, so I have on the top here the, the thesis statement. Now, I haven't talked about thesis statements. Uh, we will uh, in April, April 8th, actually. But nonetheless, you may have heard about what a thesis statement is. You may have done a research paper or an essay and your instructor wants a, a thesis statement, usually in the first paragraph. Uh, what that is, is a statement of, of where you stand on, on the issue. Uh, you're gonna write about it and you're gonna support it with evidence, but you need to introduce where you stand in the beginning. So that's in essence what a thesis statement is. So here uh, is an example of an outline, uh, in this case of uh, ecology, and uh, water, and, and it's just an example to show you of how, what the previous slide was trying to tell you, but in, in, in real terms. And at the bottom right, it's telling you with the arrows of what these major points were and what where the subtopics and supportive ideas are. Yours may not look exactly like this, but you should aim for something like this because if you have an outline that is this thorough, with detail, you can then, let's say you know you have to write an essay or you know you have to give a presentation. This could help you with that process, okay? So you know you have to have a thesis statement, you know that goes in the first paragraph. And then you have an outline which pretty much guides what you're gonna write about or in a presentation what you're gonna talk about. So you follow it um, and that's invaluable if you have something like this. Again, we can help you if this is an area you think you'd like more information on. Uh, hopefully, this is helpful for everyone. Here's the next slide. Outlines for writing assignments or exams. Once you have your outlines, you can you then use them. I just, I just mentioned this, right? You can then use them for writing uh, or doing other assignments. It's very valuable. Uh, the point here is that practice makes perfect. By you doing these things, by you taking down notes, organizing them, and then if you choose to go into the outline, it's another way of engaging with the material. All of it, you are allowing your brain, your brain, especially your subconscious, to engage with the material to a point to where you will learn the material and feel comfortable about it. But you must give it time. Rushing and doing all of this that we're suggesting the night before probably will not work. So we hope these tips were useful uh, and that you take away from it things that you could work on and improve. 
Here are some of the sources that I used uh, for this presentation. Two websites, one from Independence University and the other one from Georgia Tech Library and a manual for writing called the Bedford Guide for College Writers. Uh, and in the library, we have lots of materials, lots of books, eBooks uh, on things on like that, how to improve college writing. So seek us out if this is something that interests you and you'd like to get your hands on, on some of them. Uh, those are our, our sources consulted. Now, I mentioned this at the beginning, right, that I was going to talk about two library resources that we subscribe to that we feel are use, can be useful uh, for you as a student in improving uh, how to study and how to take notes and how to route outlines. One of them is called BrainFuse Help Now. The other one is called Learning Express Prep Step. There are two uh, uh, subscription uh, resources the library has from our website. There is the link at the bottom. Both these resources I've given presentations on thoroughly. You can go back to the uh, resources list and look them up and view the presentation video if you want. Um, there are lots and lots of, there is lots of content and supplemental materials. I mean, BrainFuse in a nutshell, is online tutoring, but it also has lots of resources to help you. And uh, Learning Express has a lot of practice, practice exams, okay, for a lot of uh, subjects, math, science, writing, English, lots of lots of material. So I am not gonna go into these. Like I said, I've already given presentations on these. On these. If you need help finding those presentation recordings, let me know and I'll be happy to do that. So in summary, prepare, get organized, leave space, and review. We believe if you follow those points, you will improve uh, your ability to write good notes. Your outlines will look superb. You will be able to study that much easier, and you will be relaxed the night before the exam, enjoying whatever it is you enjoy, ready to take on whatever it is the next day. We hope you enjoy this presentation. Next month in March, we will be doing four presentations on the series of research, research base, and Susan Bontley has been promoting those and been sending out. So my presentation is gonna take a break for the month of March and we'll resume in April. April 1st at 10 a.m. is the next one on how to incorporate sources into your writing effectively. Again, if you're interested in that, there's my email to register at the bottom. Before I finish, I do want to show you this slide. This is a picture of the ARC, the Academic Readiness, Readiness Center, otherwise known as the Tutoring Center at Doniana Community College. They are there available to help you. That's all. That's their whole purpose is to help students. So go seek them out. Uh, they, are, they have tutors in all uh, subject areas and they can help you via Zoom. And I'm sure they use a variety of tools uh, to help you do that. There's their uh, URL, their address, and a picture of their um, website, the ARC at DACC. Thank you very much. And thank you all for joining us. We hope to see you soon.